guys, for anybody who didn't watch last week's vlog, this is going to be a bit of a different style because uh, Mum and I are isolated in the house because she's got Covid. If this is the first one that you're watching, it's a bit of a pants place to start. I'd go back a few if I were you. We haven't been able to go up to the allotment. I reassured everybody last week, chickens are being looked after. In fact, the chickens are being looked after so well, I think they're going to be disappointed when we come back. But never mind. Anyway, this is what I managed to put together, guys. I hope it's not too boring. Morning guys. So it is Sunday morning and I'm going to be doing a bit of a combo about uh, bolotti beans today because that's what we're having for dinner but I've also got like all the stages of them in the sense that I've got some to shell as well although they're not the ones that I'm going to be cooking but I've still got some left from the 2019 season so I'm going to be shelling these ones, freezing them using some of the beans from last year, soaking them, and then uh, making some, some Italian bean stew with them later on this evening for dinner. But it's so early this morning, I'm starting with um, soaking them because if you don't soak them, even though they've been frozen, so they're dried and frozen rather than frozen fresh, if you freeze them fresh, they will cook really easily, but you don't get the same kind of flavor. So we dry them out and then freeze them. The only reason we freeze them is because uh, things tend to eat them like weevils and stuff in our house. So we freeze them, uh, they still need soaking. So although it's quite early this morning, I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee and soak some bolotti. Stage one complete. Next thing is to introduce you to the new fridge, which I have to say, I'm a tiny bit in love with. Can you see it? I mean, it's huge. It's about a foot taller than the last one we had. Um, you know, we were trying to fit it into the alcove where we had a cupboard on top uh, across the top there, we, there was a cupboard over the top of it. Well, that just had to go because we couldn't find a fridge that was the right size. So we went with bigger rather than smaller, but it's the right width and the right depth, which is the most important thing. Anyway, come and have a look and I will show you the bolotti beans. Today is going to be a bit of a single day vlog rather than a whole week because um, I don't really have a great deal of outdoors stuff to do. I mean next week I think I'm going to be able to fit in some outdoor stuff but the weather has been completely grey and miserable so far since I've been stuck in the house. Which in one way is a really good thing because I haven't had that kind of, you know, uh, if it's a beautiful sunny day outside, if it's sort of cold and sunny, there's nowhere I want to be other than the allotment. So although I've been really missing it, uh, at least it hasn't been good weather. But unfortunately next week we're getting the good weather. So you'll probably see me next week just with my face like squashed against the window. 
Mm. Next thing on my cards for this morning is I'm going to sow some seeds. Um, so all of our compost is obviously in the compost bins at the allotment. And I didn't realise that last day that I was up there that it was going to be my last day. So I didn't bring any home with me. And although we have Caroline looking after the chickens and I think it's a bit much to be like, can you go up to the allotment, dig out a load of compost and bring it back in a bucket for us? Because she's on foot as well. So she'd have to lug it down the hill. So basically that's a no go. And I managed to get a delivery from a local garden centre for some peat free compost and he just left it in the front garden. So that's a bit tick. That was delivered yesterday so I am on it today. Yeah, I'm going to finish my cup of coffee and then I'm going to set myself up in the conservatory ready to do a bit of sewing. <music> is vermiculite and how does it differ from perlite? Well this brown one is the vermiculite and perlite is a white colour. Vermiculite is a mined mineral, it's totally inert and it's actually magnesium aluminium iron silicate whereas perlite is a volcanic rock. Vermiculite is able to hold up to four times its own volume in water and perlite although it does have a large surface area so can hold moisture that's more for aerating the compost than maintaining moisture levels. Ideally, a mix of both is perfect for most things. So that's the mix done. Uh, next question is what am I sowing? It is a little bit late, generally, for sowing most stuff. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna be doing is sowing some more broad beans because um, you saw what happened to my other ones, they were a little bit leggy. So I don't hold out a great deal of hope, but I'm going to sow some more. They're exactly the same variety, but that's the first job. Just another quick note on the perlite vermiculite comparison. Perlite is something you would really want to have in a compost mix that you were planting cactus, succulents, that kind of plant in because it is a really fantastic aerator and aids drainage of the soil, but doesn't hold on to the water like the vermiculite does. Then again, if you were planting something like a fern, you would really want a larger percentage of the vermiculite to be keeping that water content in the soil. So that is one type of broad bean done for this morning. The Aguadolfi, same variety as I sowed last time. Hopefully these ones are going to be nice, stumpy little chaps. Uh, none of that, none of that legginess that we had with the other ones. And they might have a better chance of surviving the winter. But on the subject of broad beans, you have heard me mention quite a lot over the last couple of weeks about green manure. And I've been slowly clearing beds across the plot for planting field beans. And that is basically what I would have been doing today is planting the field beans. I have actually got them here, all ready to go. But unfortunately, like you know, I'm trapped inside. However, I know someone who isn't trapped inside. Hello and welcome to the Essex Allotment Farm. My name's Alex, if you don't know me already, I'm a small scale market gardener. 
Thank you, Jessie, for inviting me on her channel. I know you're stuck indoors and probably pretty bored at the moment. Um, at least editing the best parts out of this little video will give you something to do. Uh, before we start, just sending all the health and love to your mum, who's got um, the coronavirus, and I hope she recovers as quick as possible. Now, I understand if you were able to get to the allotment this week, you'd be planting field beans as a green manure. Well, it just so happens that um, I'm going to be doing that job this week myself. So I thought I'd record a little bit for you so you can live vicariously through me for just this week. So on that note, let's get out into the field and let's get planting some field beans. So first thing to say about field beans is that they actually are just a type of broad bean that if they're left to, they'll produce pods that are completely and utterly edible. It's just that they're smaller than broad bean varieties that have been bred for eating. OK, so we walked over to the part of the farm where I've got 10 annual beds that I won't need to plant anything in until spring. So I'm going to chuck some green manure in here and show you how to do it. But that's enough for me talking. It's Jess you've come here to see. So I'll let her describe what's going on. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little snippet. So Alex is obviously planting the field beans on a much larger scale than I am. But essentially it's exactly the same and why field beans are such a great green manure is threefold really. Firstly it's the roots so they have a really big root system that adds great structure to the soil and they also can really help break up heavy soils like clay soils and that kind of thing. They're nitrogen fixers which means that they make nitrogen available in the soil for the following crop. So things like brassicas, leafy greens, salad crops, chard, that kind of thing really love following field beans. The beans themselves also produce a good amount of soft top growth which you can chop down in spring and either dig straight into the soil itself or if you're not that keen on digging you can use it as a mulch to lay on the surface. If you're going to do that what you really want to do is chop them down before they start flowering because <laughs> Look at his little legs going. Um, yeah, you want to chop them down before they start flowering because the stems then become quite woody and at that point they're better off being chopped and thrown in the compost heap rather than laying straight on the soil. So overall green manures are often used as a weed suppressant but to be perfectly honest, field beans on their own are not that great at that because you have to plant them quite far apart for them to grow into proper plants. But if you pair them with something like a rye grass, they're brilliant at that. So there we have it. Not my field beans planted. Oh, how nice are those stripes? I've got proper stripe envy. Thanks, Alex. So that was the field beans going in, which is obviously what I should have been doing this week. Hopefully they're not gonna to mind too much going in a bit later. But what's quite interesting about field beans as opposed to broad beans is that they're actually much, much tougher. So like I was saying that you can actually eat field beans beans. Um, if you're having a hard time with broad beans for frost and stuff, if it just gets too cold where you are, it might be worth having a go with field beans for beans and just see if you're any luckier with them because they are supposedly a lot tougher and you're still getting the beans. I've said it before, but I'll stick the link right above my head now. Uh, I wrote a bit about why we're turning to green manures this year on the blog about a month ago now because it's not too late to be sowing stuff still now. So I'll do that. And I will also put the link straight underneath here for the field beans because they're a really fantastic one. So yeah, what else am I sowing this morning? Some things that I should have got in a little while ago, to be honest. I've got some pak choy. I've got a red one and a green one to go in. I mean, if I was growing these outside, this is far too late, but I'm gonna be putting them in the polytunnel, so I think I've got quite a good chance with them. Actually, everything I'm sowing today, apart from those uh, broad beans, are gonna be grown under cover. So the varieties that I'm growing are obviously the Iranian Crest from Hadda, and then we've got Dragon's Tongue Mustard Greens, which are really tasty and really beautiful, like a purple mottled kind of kind of shape. Uh, I've got land cress and then we've got land lettuce um, which is one of my favourites. Mum thinks it's got absolutely no flavour whatsoever but I really like it so I'm growing it again. <laughs> and the other one we've got was actually given to me from the Heritage Seed Library last year and I didn't get a chance to grow it so it's called Grandpa's Cress 
and I'll put a bit about it underneath. And uh, yes, I'm quite excited to try that this year. From the picture, it doesn't look like any of the other cresses we're growing, so that's going to be really interesting to try that. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to sew these into cell trays as opposed to the individual little pots that I put the broad beans in. So I've got bits and pieces that have been cut off cell trays, so I'm just going to stick them all in here. Um, yeah, not pretty, but it's going to do the job just fine. When using seed cell trays like this and very small pots to start plants off in, vermiculite really does help with the water retention because the soil capacity in these pots is so small, they tend to dry out really fast and that's never good for seedlings. They're such um, delicate plants that they really suffer from a wet, dry fluctuation. Something else that seedlings often suffer from, things like melons and cucumbers, is damping off, which is a fungus. Now, vermiculite, being an inert mineral, is fantastic for stopping this happening. So if you plant your melons, cucumbers, etc., and then put a layer of vermiculite straight over the top of the compost, that can really, really help to eliminate damping off problems. So bear that in mind next spring. One more thing about vermiculite, and I promise I won't go on about it any longer, the reason that it is called vermiculite, so when it's just a mineral, how we get it in this brown form that we use as gardeners is it's been heat treated, and when it is heated, it expands into these really long strands that sort of resemble either worms or worm casts, and that's where the vermiculite name comes from, as in vermiculture, which is a very serious name for worm farming. Well, having your fingers in compost isn't quite the same as fingers in soil, but I still enjoyed it. And that's quite a lot of things I've got sown today, so at least a bit of progress has been made. I'm going to take them into the garden and give them a water now. Okay, guys, sorry about looking like I've got a godly visitation behind me. I can't sort of block it out, so I'll just do it like this. Um, yeah, so on to shelling some bolotis. Normally how we dry the bolotis is just on the vines we just leave them so the beans grow up over the arches for the whole season we don't pick any of their beans and then we just let the whole plant dry out and all of the pods dry out and they go kind of paper dry and then you pick them off when they're completely dry but this year because we had such an incredibly wet month just now I mean it's been wetter than it's been for a good many years at this time of year and so the ones that were sort of already dried and the ones that were semi-dried started to go a little bit like mouldy so in a panic we chopped them all off even the ones that weren't dry at all and have been drying them at home so they now look like this can you see oh still got the visitation um they now look brown and they rattle so the beans are completely free inside and all I'm going to do is shell them. Oh look, there's one that has actually gone mouldy, it hasn't dried off. So that one's going to be no good. Um, but yeah, if we had just picked them off the plant when they were fresh, I'll show you some pictures because I did take some when they were proper fresh. If you pick them when they're like that and pod them, you get the beans out and just freeze them or cook them straight away like that you don't need to soak them and they are really really tasty but they taste quite different to once they've been dried and I am particularly partial to them once they've been dried so when you're shelling them all you do is just break them open and they are the most gorgeous looking beans look at that Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to shell these now. Um, I'm also not feeling fantastic. Um, so I've actually booked in 
So I've actually booked in for a test this afternoon at the COVID testing centre in Twickenham. Um, just because I feel a bit rubbish and obviously living in a house with somebody with COVID, that's the first thing you think. Just as I'm shelling these, some of these really haven't dried out, like this one. Can you see it's like, it's squashy? That's not good. I'm going to keep the um, squashy ones just to the side and see if I can do something with them. I might be able to cook them soft. But yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Well, we've booked a test at um, Twickenham Rugby Ground, so that's where we're off to. Got my passport, got my ID, ready to stick a swab up my nose. Okay, we've got there. I've got my little test card but uh, there's signs everywhere saying no filming. So <laughs> I really don't want to get arrested for um, filming at a COVID testing site. So I'm going to turn you off. See you at the other side. Right, we're home. Down the back of the throat one wasn't, wasn't really a problem, but oh God, sticking that swab like right up your nose was uh, eye watering. I'm going to go in and cook those beans now. I think the thing I need more than anything else though is a glass of wine. Yeah. Okay guys, this is the beans. I've got my glass of wine. I'm not feeling enormously chatty, so I'm going to write what's happening on the screen as we go and the recipe will be up on the blog if you're interested in cooking it yourself. Absolutely everything in here apart from the garlic and the onions is homegrown and it's comfort food, and comfort food is what's needed right now.
quite a lot better this morning, so um, don't know whether that will end up being a positive test or not. I could have just not felt very well. Who knows? Hopefully we'll find out in the next couple of days. But, so also apologies for not actually filming how we ate the beans last night, but I filmed the making of it, obviously you saw that, but I just really didn't feel like doing uh, the whole dinner bit. We ended up having the beans with uh, some roasted pheasant and some of the crown prints um, and this, I know we talked about all the different pumpkins, but I maintain this is the finest pumpkin on earth. Crown prints is my man, I'm afraid. It's just wonderful and it was so delicious with the beans and then we also had just uh, buttered cavallanero with it and I gotta say even if I was feeling crap it was really really good dinner but we have got beans left over so mum and I are going to have them for lunch I've just got to get some bread out of the oven that we put in this morning <laughs> Essentially fancy beans on toast, I think, for lunch today, which will be pretty nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to get on with that. I didn't get the uh, beans like properly vlogged and got them so you could see them kind of set out as our dinner and I will put the recipe for it the link down underneath here because I can tell you it's a really really fine dish and I mean even on toast to be fair most things on toast are pretty good but they are particularly good mm. anyway it's a gin and tonic kind of afternoon it's Monday um, so this will be coming out tomorrow for you guys on Tuesday and on Tuesday I will have six days left in isolation. So up until now I said we've had crap weather, we've got a really good forecast coming next week so I'm going to be properly going spare wanting to get outside. Something I did get done uh, this previous week is I have run through every episode of these vlogs that I've made so far and just take a note of what I've done in each of them and so now if you're looking for something specific if you go on the website I'll put the link underneath if you go into episode guide on the website it just lists really basics but what's included in each episode so you don't have to trawl through 30 episodes of me ranting on about stuff that's not relevant to what you want so hopefully that's going to be useful to somebody so yeah as I was scanning through the last 30 episodes of the vlog I was thinking you know this has been a really weird year we all know 2020 not going to forget it in a hurry are we but two things I am really grateful for for this year is firstly starting to make sourdough bread that's been a bit of a revelation but secondly, starting this vlog. There is no way I would have started vlogging if it wasn't for the lockdown. And I've enjoyed it so much. It's just been brilliant, uh, like meeting. I've met so many interesting people on, well, digitally met them. I haven't really met them, obviously, because meeting people isn't really the dumb thing at the moment. But maybe in the future, you never know. Talking about meeting people not being the dumb thing. So, uh, my release day <laughs> is Sunday next week and for those of you who aren't in the UK on Thursday we're going back into a lockdown again so I've been dreaming of like an ice cold pint of cider from the tap just that's what I want and I'm gonna miss it by two days 
oh well, I'll have to wait till December, it'll be a bit of a Christmas present. In December I will have a pint of cider in a pub. So I don't really have that much to say. I have talked non-stop in this vlog. I was just running through it to check there wasn't any glaringly obvious mistakes and if you've stuck it out this far, cheers because boy have I talked a lot in this one. One more note to the guys who won the competition that was for vlog number 25. Everything's packaged up. It's all the seeds, the chilies and the tomatoes are all in the envelopes. It's got your name and address on the front, but I can't get to the post office at the moment. So um, that will be at the beginning of, not next week, but the week after. I will get them sent out to you, I promise. And on that note, chaps, really just want to say thank you. I've had just the loveliest messages from everybody and it's just such a lovely thing. And I wouldn't be able to be doing this without you lot who miraculously want to actually watch me ramble on for 30 minutes every week and I can't tell you how grateful I am that you do want to watch me ramble on because it's basically giving my life a bit of meaning at the moment <laughs> yeah that was a bit deep anyway much love chaps see you next week mm -hmm.